It's the Docinco Project. Money pouring in, clientele growing down. With your host, Docinco. Let's go! What up, everybody? You are now tuned into the Docinco Project, where we talk about business, entertainment, motivation, and mindset. We have another special guest with us in the building today. This man worked on Wall Street. He held positions with Goldman Sachs, Serios Capital Management, Raptors Capital, Capital Management, and Truist Securities. Built a multi-million dollar real estate empire with over 100 rental units from scratch. And I'm going to say that again. He's built a real estate investment firm with over 100 rental units from scratch. He is the co-founder of KJ Consulting where he's helping people achieve their financial goals and build generational wealth. He's one of the first, if not the first, in his family to achieve a college education amongst his family and friends. And his tremendous story can be featured on prominent financial shows like Market Watch and other media outlets, among others. Everybody, please welcome KR. How you doing today, sir? I am so excited to be on this platform. I am so impressed. Thank you, you are doing so much work for the community. It's just, it's crazy. I, I'm just honored to be able to share my story and the energy and be in Philly and be with like a brother. It's, it's amazing. Yes, yes. Listen, I'm excited myself because number one, you and I, we know what we're up against when we're in the inner cities of Philadelphia, right? And to see people like yourself come up out, but come up out with very little means and actually build it from scratch is motivation not only to me, but also to the audience, you oh, know? Yeah. Because some people, they, they tend to use, you know, their struggle as a means to um, kind of relax on that, so to speak, mm -hmm. and stay in the struggle. Whereas mm -hmm. you, you saw that as kind of a stepping stone to take it to the next level. Yes, yes. Describe that mindset. So it's crazy because like growing up in Philadelphia with my six siblings in a single parent household, my mother, and we moved around from place to place. We lived like on 20th and Carpenter in South Philly. We lived in uh, on 5th and Cesar B. Moore in North Philly, on 23rd and Cesar B. Moore in North Philly, on 28th and Cesar B. Moore, then living on 50th and Walton in West Philly on an uneven number side and on an even number side, then living on 56th and Walton. My friends were like, damn, you live on three, <laughs> three times on the same block? Good Lord, how often? y'all moving i said i didn't know you're supposed to move 18 times before you turn 18 the, and we wanted military kids we just poor as hell right. and we my mother wasn't a good manager of money but she loved us so what she did is she poured into us so i remember one time being homeless where our house burned down so i know the struggle my sister was murdered um, by the father mm. of her three children and i remember my brother getting sent off to prison one year uh, younger than me for attempted murder while i was going off to college so i know how difficult it can be but no matter what the world throw at you you got to keep coming out the corner swinging right. and so i just wanted a better life for myself and once i saved myself then i was able to start saving other people in my family and community wow you, what you just what you just mentioned is is is, is deep in, in all different types of ways right not only did you suffer from you know relatives being um you know passing away mm -hmm. and incarceration within the family and having to deal with the struggles of a mother having to take care of her children and so yeah. forth and then you also jumping around trying to dodge <laughs> the landlord so to speak right yeah where did you get your exposure to see that there's something outside of that particular neighborhood well what was amazing is that my uh step stepdad came back into my life because my mother said she was tired and she wanted my younger sibling's father to take some responsibility so we spent like a year with him and he set me down he said don't be an f up like me and like a lot of your family members don't do as i do do what i say now if you believe in yourself and you work hard and you really want to get out the hood you can get out like don't look at me so what i learned early on i was like 13 right. as i said look this guy's imperfect but i'm going to pay attention to the things that he's saying that could work and see if it really worked. And so I went from middle school smoking weed and drinking and running the streets and yep. hooking. In, and that was the turning point. Then I became the valedictorian of my high school. Oh, wow. So I went from the kid, people wrote my autograph book from eighth grade, I can't believe you made it. Wow. To the kid who turned around and said, look, I really can do something. I'm not as dumb as I thought I was. Um, and then I started to thrive there. So that okay. started to open my eyes and say, look, I don't want to be a teenage dad. I don't want to live in a, in a studio apartment where you have like 15 people where mm -hmm. you basically have, you have a bathroom uh, sheet, but you don't have a bathroom door. You have a bathtub, but you don't have a shower. 
Right. You have a hot plate, but you don't have a stove. You have one bed, you have all these people, you have rats and roaches, and it's so tiny and, and cluttered. And I was like, I don't want that life. Mm. And so it just started from that young age to start saying, look, let me just try to apply myself and see if it worked. And then I did a little bit, and then it start working. So if you do what's necessary, then do what's possible, you yep. find yourself doing the impossible. And so I realized success doesn't like speed. So I started to realize if you do what's if you do things well, they're done soon enough. And so I just start taking baby steps and that just started to turn into big steps. Wow. What was the well, first of all, that's very impressive because, you know, when 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 your stepfather said, do as I say, not as I do, sometimes that could be a little discouraging, especially to the youth, because I'm looking at my dad and my dad's acting like a nut. <laughs> So yep, to speak, yep, right? Yep, struggling, but, not paying things on time. But you're, you're, you're like, okay, I'm going to follow this man's advice. I have enough respect for this man that I'm going to follow his advice. Yep. That's very impressive. Now, what was the little step that, you know, because I remember you saying, you know, you take baby little steps, baby yep. steps, right? What was the first step? So the, the really first step was, I said, I don't even like alcohol. Why am I drinking beer since fifth grade? And I'm, I'm like going into the eighth grade. I don't even like this stuff. Why am right. I drinking and smoking cigarettes and newspapers and all this stuff? This don't make sense. I don't even like the way it tastes. Right. So I started saying, all right, first of all, I'm going to do is just stop doing things I don't like. Um, and then the next thing I said is I'm going to start to study. I'm going to try to see what this studying thing means. Because mm. I would be like, I ain't studying. Them. I ain't opening no book. Yo, I'm trying to have fun. <laughs> and then I said, I'm going to just, just try and get perfect attendance. Just go to school first. Just be there every day. Don't even try to be a star. Just say I'm going to be there every day. So it was baby steps like that. Wow. And you governed that all by yourself. Yep, yep. Because I start waking up and I was like, yo, I don't want to, I don't want to be homeless. I don't want to struggle. Mm. I don't want to be broke. I don't want people shooting at me. I remember when I was like in elementary school and my brother and I, we walked around the corner, but somebody put a 357 to our head, was about to kill us. Wow. And my brother was crazy enough. He going to say, uh, uh, you, you, if you're going to pull that gun out, you better use it. And I'm sitting there like, oh, no, the hell not today. <laughs> to Wait till that. I'm home. Let him use it when you're out here by yourself. Exactly. And so I was like, I want, I want to get out. So it was that mentality to say, look, I had a burning desire. Yep. to want something more for myself. And that burning desire led to my di discipline. So I start becoming disciplined. And I had that determination, no matter what the world threw at me, to just keep swinging. I was like, I'm going to swing my way out of here. I'm going out with a fight. Absolutely. And so that's when it all started. Wow. So you, 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 you mentioned in, um, I believe, in the Market Watch video that I, that I viewed, um, that at the age of 14, you started studying stocks, financial management, yeah. real estate, and yeah. so forth. Yeah. Um, what, you know, out of all different types of studies or disciplines what made you drive towards yep. the business oh aspect what made of me it? go to the business aspect is because like my stepdad or my mother or my family members uh and my local church they all loved me and they were really they cared about me but i realized they weren't good managers of money that's Ooh. why we kept moving so much because gotcha. we couldn't pay the bills on time and so i started saying wow they got good hearts but they don't understand money management mm. Then I start opening books about money management, and then I start opening books about wealth creation and real estate investing, and that's what really made me start looking at it, saying, oh, that's the way out. Let, let me get this, this money right. Then I learn how to make it, learn how to um, manage it. Then I was able to get out. So that's what made me go in that direction because my family was struggling with money. Think about that time, though, right? This was a time before the Internet, Yes, right? it was Tech, Because the, the internet. internet started coming. Uh, I mean, Internet was... I guess been has but been here since used, the 70s. It wasn't yeah, but used. it was used every day. So exactly. this is like 1997, 1996. So you're going to the library. Yep, I'm going to the the library and I'm going to like uh the University of Penn bookstore mm -hmm. on like 36 and uh Walnut and just going to read the books and putting them back cuz wow. back then you only could use the internet once in a while you would do um uh, the you little have the, cards. The little cards, yeah. and I would do it at my friend's houses. like five or ten hours, yep, right? Yep. yep, do it at my friend's houses and use the internet. But primarily, you had to go to the bookstore and do everything mm -hmm. on your own. Okay. So when other people were just playing basketball and stuff, I was spending my time going to the bookstore, looking mm -hmm. at the latest books on business and just burying myself. And I didn't understand immediately, yep. so I would read a book four or five times and ask wow. people questions and say, I don't know what this means. Can you explain it to me? Yeah. I wasn't afraid to be vulnerable and say, look, and be humble and say, look, I don't know what the hell this is, but I want to figure it out. No, absolutely. And the crazy thing is you have so many people that, you know, you have some that I, I know I battled this, uh, battle with this with my son right now, my 12 year old. He hates books. Right. Mm -hmm. But I told him, I said, you have so much knowledge in these books. Yeah, You can watch you can watch TikTok. You can watch Instagram all you want. And you're scrolling constantly. And next thing you know, hours have gone by. OK, you probably got one golden nugget out of it, but it's in the books, really. Right. Yeah. Um, 
when did you start to, I guess, digest it, but then start to apply it? Because you have a lot of people that have read a ton of books, but have applied nothing. They just sound very so, smart. So my stepdad used to call me the executioner. Okay. When I was like in, uh, in eighth grade and ninth grade and stuff, he said, because I would execute. Mm. So I was always that person that say, all right, I read it, now apply it. So I read a book about like investing in certificates of deposits. Okay. So then I went to go to, the, I went to the bank and I would sit down with the bank teller and say, look, da, 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 how do I open one of these up? And they're like, well, you got to get your parents' consent. Then I could pull a parent there to come and sign the thing so I could start doing certificate deposits. Okay. Then I wanted to learn about bonds. So I would read and apply, read and apply, read and apply. Love so you. first you listen, you ask the questions, and then you apply. So I'm going to listen to what you, the knowledge you're giving me, then I'm going to ask you questions, and then I'm going to apply it to something. Mm -hmm. Because my advice is free. It only has value when you apply it. So that's how, that was my approach. So did you ever feel, you know, especially coming from inner city, Philadelphia, all of the struggles you were up against, right? That those stuff, I mean, those things can really um, create a lot of limiting beliefs amongst yourself, right? Yeah, yeah. So you're constantly battling against yourself, always, right? Constantly, always, right? Always. So to take that first step, to go into that bank and say, you know what, I want to open up. Did you yeah. feel like an inferiority complex about yourself to say, you know what, I don't belong here? Like, that's oh, your mind no, saying all, that to you. All of us, if you're super young, like 14, 13, and you mm -hmm. come from an underprivileged background, you do feel, you do feel that way. Mm -hmm. um, but what you tell yourself is like, look, I ain't got nothing to lose. <laughs> we already <laughs> broke. We, some days I got to do my homework with the street light because we ain't got no electricity. We ain't got no heat. We doing a cookout in, a, in the dead winter because they ain't got no gas. I said, just walk up in this damn place. The worst thing they're going to say is no. The best right. thing can happen is they want to give me some advice. So that was my new mentality on everything. It was like, I got nothing to lose. Right. I tell people, look, if I lose everything I got now, I was already homeless and broke before. So I'll have this will be my second go around. I'm going to be really good at this time. Yep. So I had nothing to lose. But of course, you have those doubts. But you just say, let's suck it up. Let's go. I got nothing else to lose. Plus, I don't know these people. Right. What happens sometimes, we put so much pressure on ourselves to impress people that we don't even know. So true. Like when I walk down the street, if I'm wearing regular clothes, who cares? If I'm if I'm get asking questions in front of people, I don't know who cares. I don't sleep with those people that don't pay my bills. Yep. Um, unless you're a little freaky, but you don't need to, you don't need to worry <laughs> right. about that. But I'm just saying, like when right. you're out there, just ask the questions. I love it, love it. So you know, 14 again. You're you're you're, you're reading these books now. You're the first in your family to get a college education, right? Yeah, that's so a huge hump in my, itself. But I wasn't the first to go to college. So okay, like some of my you're family the first members to complete. They went. Gotcha. They go, but they don't complete. You know gotcha. how you have that family yeah, member like, absolutely. yo, I'm going off for that semester, mm -hmm. and they yep. come back and didn't work out. I know so super another, seniors <laughs> till this day, 10 another, years in college, they just went to party. Another family member would come and didn't go but i do have cousins and all these different things family members that, that but i mean like that media the like immediate. that group that group in that six house with right. that mom i was the first one to get out of it wow um so was and there... the thing is that i didn't i said i decided to go off to maine yep. because i said i need to go to another country so mm. for me it was another country god oh no absolutely so I said, downtown it, is another it was country my, for it was some. my first time getting on a plane okay. as well so i said when i go to maine my family was like why are you gonna go to maine i was like they said you might as well be in canada i said because i gotta get away i had to yes. be some separation to concentrate mm -hmm. so when i went off i was able to concentrate and find who i am mm. um and grow into the experience otherwise i would get pulled back a lot of times people go down college down the street they get pulled back from the streets and all the struggle yep. and the stress no separation. So that's what made me step out and say, all right, I want to see what the real world look like. I want to go somewhere I've never been before. I love and burn that. a bridge. Out of all me. places, Maine, though. That's because I had a counselor. I did oh, an after school program. Okay. And I was, I, I happened to do really well and become valedictorian. And I was thinking about going to uh, maybe like an Ivy League or going to one of the history with black colleges. I applied to all these different places. But my counselor pulled me aside and said, no, come here, come here, KR. He said, I got the best school for you. I'm sending you off the boat in, in Maine. I was like, well, I want to go to Maine. What's up there? <laughs> What's up and there? like yeah. super young. I don't want to go up there. I don't know nobody up there. He was like, this is your best choice because you're going to get personalized attention. If you go to like one of these big schools, you may get lost mm. and people are not going to be able to find you. Um, and then the other, the flip side, he said, you're not going to be able to stand out. But if you go to like one of these elite schools that have a lot of resources, they're going to do their best to help you succeed and you're going to have so many resources that you don't even have to question about okay. anything. So then I was like, all right, let me go check it out. And I went out there and I loved the people, loved the food. Um, and
and I was in Maine, which is so crazy. Maine's your second home now. I love Maine. I love it. <laughs> love the lobster. It was so. It was a whole. It was a different world from where you come from. Let me tell you, that's that's. I think that's very key for anybody living in the inner city or anybody that has seen the struggle. And I'm, I'm the reason why I say that is I was raised on Ella Street between Ontario and Tioga in the Fairhill section, North Philly, and so mm. forth. Right. All you see, especially in the area that I grew up in, all you see is drug dealers, drug addicts. Yep. Cops coming every which way, yeah, yeah. picking up bodies, locking yes. people up. So that, if that's all you see and that's all you're programmed to see, that's 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 your world. Yeah. And unless you're watching, I remember watching Full House, Step uh -huh. by Step, yeah. Family yeah. Matters. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, they have a lawn, yeah. yes. you know? They they are camping. I would yeah. like to camp in my backyard. Yeah. My father was like, you better not go to that backyard, yeah. you know? So you see all of that. So exposure is very key. And I got my exposure. My father used to take us on vacations every summer. We used to go to Cancun, Mexico, oh, or whatever. Oh, get, but yeah. get money. But that's because he busted his behind and worked oh, hard. And he wanted nice. us to see something different. I didn't even know people. When I was growing up, I didn't even know you were supposed to go a vacation. All right, y'all, we going to Chuck E. Cheese. Right, exactly. That, that was or our going to our parents' house. I mean, uh, going to our no, cousins' house. Or something. We didn't even go to no cousins. Oh wow, it was just super poor. Like no cousins. There's no family. My she mother was like the outcast. She ain't get down with her people like that in New York. So <laughs> she said, I don't get F out of here. Go do your thing. Yep, I'm yep. on my own. She's a rebel. And so we were like, damn, why we gotta suck? Why can't we right. see our family? Like, nah, I don't get down with them like that. What, the, you know, what, what type <laughs> what of mentality do with is us? that? Right. So we would go to like Chuck E. Cheese and be mm -hmm. like, everybody else talking about they at least went somewhere. So I'm glad your dad at least did that. Yeah, I think the first vacation we ever went to was Puerto Rico because obviously we have relatives oh, out there, so we nice. stay. And then he elevated him. You know, he elevated our vacation. And we ended up going oh, to Cancun. Wow. So that was the first time I that saw turquoise so nice. water. And I was like, wow, this is here? That is nice. You know, Delaware, Delaware River is all black water. You, know, you don't see, can't even see through it. Um, so you started interning for, so you, you're in college. Then you started interning for, on, Wall um, on Wall Street, right? Yeah. What, what, you know, out of all the different business avenues you could have gone to, real estate, <clears throat> business management, what have you, what made you go right to the stocks? But I, I knew that I wanted to uh, go into finance because when I was in high school, I had a, a SAT mentor, okay. uh, David Kirsch, a okay. Jewish kid that went to University of Penn. And I was asking him, I said, so uh, I already liked stocks and stuff since I was like 14 or 13. So I, already oh, read so you had lot, an I read a lot of those books about gotcha. Warren Buffett and all those different people. Intelligent so investor. Our, intelligent investor, yep. like Benjamin Graham. So I already knew about that. But I met this, this kid, uh, David Kirsch, who was my SAT prep tutor. And I asked him what he was doing. And when he graduated, he said he was going to Wall Street. And I was like, and then he explained to me. And I was like, I can do that. I think I can. I can. This kid is smart. I can, think mm -hmm. I can do that. Uh, his dad was an investment banker, so he came from money. But I was like, I don't come from no damn money, but I know I can break into it. <laughs> right. now, they, plus, I've been doing this since for the past four years, since I was like 14 or 13. And now I'm about to be 18. So apparently, if you just do what's necessary, mm -hmm. then you do what's possible. You find yourself doing the impossible. So at this point, I think I can do anything. It's crazy. So I just was like, all right, I'm gonna go. I said, when I go to college, I want to explore the entire finance food chain. Okay. So my freshman year, I got an internship at America Express, and I did um, asset management. Then mm -hmm. my sophomore year, I did prudential securities, got exposure to sales and trading um, in New York. And then my junior year, I did investment banking at Credit Suisse um, and got exposure to doing investment banking. And then I took a job at Goldman Sachs. So I was very strategic. So I made everybody know, y'all want to bring this poor boy up here, then that means that y'all are responsible to help me become successful. Y'all might as well just leave me in Philly. Mm -hmm. So I'm running around, everybody office, yo, what's up? You know, I want to go on the Wall Street. I want to do finance. I'm the only one up here. I ain't got no family. Let's make this happen. What y'all need from me, I'm going to do what y'all need. Y'all yep. do what I need, and we can be successful. Look, this going to make the school look good. I'm going to make y'all look good. Uh -huh. da -da -da. And so that was the mentality. As, as soon as I got on campus, there was no joke. I wasn't there just to party and all this other stuff. I said, look, I'm here for business. How do we get from point A to Z? That's all I need. I did not come here to just hang out. I came here to execute. Let's get this party started. So I had an internship every summer. It's that hustler's mentality in you. It's that dog in you. That dog in you with regards to coming up out of nowhere, seeing the opportunities and seizing it. You know, and, and utilizing whoever you had to utilize in order to get to where you had to come. Oh, absolutely. To. It's being unafraid mm -hmm. to go after what you really want. Absolutely. So, and I, I really believe in order to do something that you've never done, you have to become someone that you've never been. Mm. So I was willing to grow into this new person. Wow. I so, didn't want to be stuck. So American Express, 
uh, entry level, what were you doing? So that one, it was a summer internship, and uh, I work with American Express Financial Advisors. Okay. So we're talking about um, insurance products. We're talking about asset management, wealth creation. Um, you're talking about trust. You're talking about all these little things that mm. people would do when they do think about their personal finances and, and their were family. You, were you shadowing a lot yeah, of these I would, I would work closely with the uh, financial advisor, and so what he would say is, um, KR, we need you to um, put – input this information, because you're only like 18 or something, input this right. information into the computer file. This is their their financials. This is a portfolio stimulation. We're gonna have a lunch. We're gonna talk to this person. I need you to take notes um, and things like that. That's Tell so me what the, what the stock market is doing this morning. Do a little brief report. Mm -hmm. So that was a cool thing. And then you do the similar things for like sales and trading, but now it's a sales and trading job. So now you're learning about uh, the role and responsibility. How do you place trades? You're sitting behind a desk. Um, you're getting people coffee and lunch and things like that. So it's pretty cool. So That's when you crazy. get ready to do the job, mm -hmm. you already, you don't feel overwhelmed. So if you've been spending the past three years every summer on Wall Street, when you get there, you won't have shell shock. Right. Because you'll be like, I've never been around people like this. I'm like, I've been doing this for a couple of years now. I, I feel more comfortable. I know what they want. What's the expectation? I, 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 know, I know that feeling, man. And and, it, and it's tough because I had I had that shell shock. When I initially, oh, yeah, I had the shell shock. I, it wasn't, I mean, when I, when I did internships, it was like little small internships that my mom would oh, set me up for. Got you. So yeah. she's working at American uh -huh. Red Cross. Yeah. She's like, okay, you can do some database entry and I'm sitting okay. down and I'm just clicking and uh -huh. clacking on the keyboard. And, yeah. but that was that. But <laughs> when I actually started my first, you know, my first job Real full job. time yeah. and I have a suit and tie on and I'm amongst my peers and I see my peers just making things happen. I'm stuck on stupid. I could barely answer a phone and, and uh -huh. set up my voicemail box, yeah. you know? Yeah. So I definitely understand that. So you definitely had the heads up, but for you to be so strategic, yeah. at the, yeah. your brain was operating at a different pace than everyone else. Would yeah. you say that? Or I think did you so. feel like you were different from everyone else? I was else? very different, um, mm. extremely different. Um, because a lot of my, so my friends, when, when they were just, they came to college just to make friends with their college peers. Mm -hmm. I came to college to make friends with the board of trustees, to make pr friends with the president, with the deans. I wanted to know as much about them as they wanted to know about me. So I, I was, I wasn't playing. I was in the financial aid office. I was in the alumni office talking about, I want to go to Wall Street. They told me, uh, this is the alumni office. I know I, that's why I'm here to do. But I want to be on office. Wall Street. Yeah, I'm trying to get on Wall Street. You know anybody? Let me know. Let me know. Let me know. And I would go to another room. Let me know. Let me know. Because I'm like, look, I got four years. I got to lose myself. Like Eminem said, I got to lose myself. I ain't got time to be playing with y'all. I love that, man. What was the urgency, though, behind it? Like, what was the urgency? Were, were you looking at, you know, people passing away around you and you're like, yo, life is too short? Were you looking at, like, listen, I got I to gotta make a way for my family? What were you for looking me, at I had, during that I time? thought at that, um, I always think of myself, I was in a hurry because mm. I actually was looking around, really that life, can, you can lose your life in a, in a, in a heartbeat. Mm. Or your life can go to other direction. Remember, I told you when the the free, the fall of my senior year, when I got accepted to go into college to go to Bowdoin College, one of the top liberal arts colleges. My brother, one year younger, he was sentenced um, for that year for attempted murder. So he had to spend twelve years in prison. He's one year younger than me. Wow. And so that hit hit me. And then also my sister, my junior year, she's murdered, f shot five times by the father of her three children in the face. Mm. Um, my junior year, and so was that on the news? Because I remember hearing a story all around like nationally. That. Okay, um, and so when you're seeing all these different things, and then my life was always un so much uncertainty, mm -hmm. where you have housing insecurity, food insecurity. So for me, I was like, I don't really have time to, to play be these playing games. these games. Mm -hmm. Like I really gotta make a life better. Like even before my sister passed away, I was at home a week ago for my j internship on Wall Street, and I bought my mother appliances and my sister's appliances. Took all my nieces out, nieces and nephews out to go eat and everything. So I'm trying to, even though I'm only a super young person, um, I still was helping my family. Whether I gave my brother money for his down payment, even though I'm only like 18 or 19 for yep. his house, um, paying for funerals. So I knew that I had a lot on my shoulders. Mm. So I didn't have time to like be playing these games. Um, so that was that was the big driver. Now, for every man, there's a downfall, right? And what I mean by that, there's certain triggers that can, you know, that can that can create our downfall. And sometimes that can be alcohol, like you mentioned. Yes, it could be those vices. It could be women. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, did you face any of you those? You know what? I because I grew up so fast, growing up in Philly, like learning how to shoot a gun when I was in elementary. Yeah. Uh, running through the streets, hooking, got hit by a car, trying to go 
hook up with this girl. It's a lot of crazy <laughs> stuff that happened that most people, they would do this stuff in their 20s. Mm-hmm. I was doing it between the age of like 9 and 13. Mm. During my, yeah, you cra- start off my, young. <laughs> my crazy periods. Like It's like Boys in the Hood and Menace of Society. Yep. You drinking, you doing stuff you're not supposed to do. So I had that period okay. where I was telling people, it, I was like, yeah, I, I'm glad I stopped uh, smoking and drinking because it was good, bad for my health. No, they said, no, you glad you stopped because it saved, saved your life. Absolutely. So I think I had those periods that a lot of people have in their 20s. I had like between the, nine, the age of 9 and 13, okay. which helped me mature and realize the, um, the consequences of those bad decisions. Wow. So it's one thing if you just read about it in a book. Yes. It's a whole different thing if you lived the situation where mm-hmm. my mother dated a man that was a, a serious alcoholic and mm-hmm. you just see the, the how bad then the person yeah. get on crack and then mm-hmm. like you see like your your family member this happened and that happened. So you start saying, Oh hell no. One of my friends is gonna be like, Yo, you so serious like Malcolm X. Like mm-hmm. you just went to prison and you yeah. didn't really go, but your whole life your demeanor changed, and that really, even though I'm a Christian, but that really did happen at a young age. Mm-hmm. What helped me learn how to control my vices, mm-hmm. or figure out what was, um, what pushes me, what 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 things mm-hmm. can get me too. I never get too high or too low okay. because I start realizing how to sharpen my own tool and yep. also how to maintain my cool under a lot of pressure. Wow. But if I didn't have those five years or four years, I think I probably would have been crazy like some of my friends doing some <laughs> crazy stuff. But seeing the family members. All that happened really young, it just like make you say, nah. No, it does. It, it absolutely does. Um, you know, I can relate s- to some somewhat of the stories yeah. that you have. I mean, I had I had cousins that passed away at 15 yeah. years old, same age as yeah. me at that time. Crazy. Uh, visiting them in the hospital, yeah. their their entire body. I mean, you're talking about. 80 pounds, 90 pounds, but they look so blown up as if they're 200 pounds because the, the, the bullets have inflamed them. So seeing all of that at an early age, it just really shows you that's not the move for me, you know? Oh. Or, 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 or seeing crackheads walking past yes. you like yes. nothing. You know, you're like, nah, I'm not going to do It's one thing if you see them uh, just random, but if mm-hmm. they're your family members, your yes. siblings and stuff, that, yes. that hits home a whole different, on a whole different level. Man, I had, I had an uncle. I had an uncle. He was, he was strung out on drugs. My neighbors started chitter chatting. Somebody knocked on my door. They said, "Your uncle just—he—he he just went to the Comcast truck, stole a bunch of boxes, and just started running." And I'm mm. like, "This is what you see, you know?" Because yeah. it's just the addiction behind that. But anyway, um, Wall Street, right? Yeah. So how long were you on Wall Street for? So basically, my whole uh, career was on Wall Street from your college. entire career. Yeah. Wow. Other so, than going to business school, primarily, primarily, yeah. And you went to what, Dartmouth? I went to Dartmouth to get my MBA at the Tuck School of Business. Yeah. Nice, nice. I was in the Ivy I, Leagues, yeah. I was in Dartmouth for probably two weeks, but it was two weeks for a program okay, that I was taking a certificate. Nice. Beautiful campus. Yes, you know, nice gorgeous. little college Hanover, campus. New Hampshire, yes. Yeah, absolutely. So um, what trans- let's, let's talk about you transitioning into a real estate investor. Okay. Now, were you working on Wall Street, but then also making financial always, investments into real always, estate? Always, always. So I already knew I wanted to go into <clears throat> real estate because my um, stepdad, okay, Charles Washington, we were, and when we were super broke, he was he was most one of the most intelligent people I ever knew in my life. But he was never focused. He can build. He could literally build a house. He could rehab this. He also can make clothes. He was an artist. He could do everything. Like, okay. you ever meet those people that are so gifted? He's a gifted speaker. He'd do everything. But he was never focused. Mm. So he'll do like 18 different things within one week. Jack of Talking all trades, master of none. Jack of all trades, master of none. But yeah. all over the place, all over the place. Talking about, I made a little bit of money here. I'm like, brother, just if you were focused, you would make so much money. Absolutely. And we would take walks around the neighborhood. He would say, You see that crackhead house right there? That house is going to become a, a condo. They're going to knock down this whole, everything he predicted happened in Philadelphia. Whoa. Even though I was only a young guy. I was paying attention. Okay. So he, he planted the seed in me to think about real estate. Okay. That's where it really started. Um, and I was like, all right, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get some money when I get my job. I'm going to save a bunch of some money. I'm going to use some of my scholarship money. I'm going to buy a property. Yep. And so when I turned um, 26, that's when I bought the first property in 2009. 26? At 26, and I was mm. still working on Wall Street. So my thing was, I'm gonna keep this nine to five job because I have to pay my bills. I yep. want health care. I don't want to be broke again. I already did that. That was a fun. So I said, I'm gonna buy. I'm gonna try to buy one property a year for the okay. first nine years. So 2009, I had one rental property. By 2019, I had no. By 2000, 2009, I had one. By 2018, I had nine rental units, basically oh, wow. nine houses. Okay. So I took my time. People were saying, "Kr, you're going too slow." 
I thought you're supposed to be smart. Why are you going so slow? So by 2019, I got up to 35 rental units. So within one year, I basically bought 26 rental units. And then by 2020, I got to 105. So I'm going to run that back. 2009, one. Yep. 2018, nine rental units. 2019, um, 35 rental units. 2020, 105. And now I'm 120 plus. Mm. And people would say, you bought 20 rental units during the pandemic? Yes. Mm. Because... What I was doing is playing a long-term game. Yep. I knew that eventually I wanted to get big. So what I did is I kept my nine to five, saved my cash flows for my rental properties, let the de- the tenants pay down the debt, yep. and I was able to refi cash out. And therefore, the I had the money from the right? appreciation, yep. be able to take the money out and use that for down payments to buy my big apartment buildings. Wow. So that's how I transitioned from buying single family houses to now I own like a 24 unit apartment building, a 14 unit apartment building with a restaurant, two 12 unit apartment buildings, a nine unit apartment building, two six unit apartment buildings, two five unit apartment buildings, two triplexes, two duplexes, and a bunch of single families because I had a plan. Mm. Now, this was all while you were working a nine to five. Yes. But and meanwhile, so, online. Yes. Every guru yep. wants to say, quit your nine to five yes. and go and, and, and go all at it. And if you're not going all at it, then you're not doing enough. Yes. But you did it all with a nine yes, to five. Yes, you can. Did, did yeah. you guys hear that? I like to look at the camera periodically. Oh, did you yeah, guys yeah, hear yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Nine to five and ended up accumulating 105 rental units because he was playing the long game and he was playing smart with investing his money. It's not about how much you make. It's about how much you keep, how much you save, how much you invest. That is so true. KR, so man, true. you are a beast, KR. No, I, what I do is I just put my head down and I really focus on my craft. I try not to run anyone else's race. Run your own race at your own pace. And you'll be surprised how much you can accomplish. And put your team together. So what I was doing is I focused on the first three R's, which was build the track record. You want to convince people that you know what you're doing. So you're going to take your time. You're going to analyze the projects. You're going to put the teams together. And you're going to make sure you're getting the results you want. The next thing you're going to do is build those relationships. So once you have the relationships with the banks, with the contractors, with all these different people, you're able to leverage those relationships. And then the third thing that's going to happen is your reputation is going to precede you. So because you have a strong rec- track record and you have strong relationships, now people are begging to work with you because you've proven that you are successful. And then the thing I've realized is the three C's, which was the intellectual capital, the social capital, and the financial capital. So first I start trying to educate myself, reading those books, listening to podcasts, doing all those different things, educating yourself, getting mentors. And then what you're doing is you're building that social capital, those relationships, you're using those. Mm -hmm. And now we live in a capitalist society. America is a capitalist society. You have to understand how to get capital, how to manage capital, how to move capital. Mm. And so that's what helped me transition from being a full-time employee to becoming a boss. And you just retired with 2020, right? Yes, in 2020. So, right, I the the summer, that summer, I bought those 70 units. I gave my boss a 90-day notice that I was going to resign. And then I um, resigned, like, uh, September 8th or 9th of 2020. So what made you want to do that, even though... Based off of the investments that you've made early on, you could have retired a whole lot earlier. At least that's what I'm thinking. Yes, you could. Yeah. Yeah. So what made you feel as though 2020 was the right moment? So when I was at in 2009, when I bought that first rental unit, I was working for a financial firm and I had said, I said, man, they had so many restrictions. I was like, man, the world's coming to an end. And I'm only like 26 or something, 25 during that time period. I'm like, yo, if the world ever come to an end again, and everybody around me on Wall Street stuff, they're getting super rich. I said, I'm just going, I'm going to become super rich next time the world comes to an end. Because yeah, I'm like, absolutely. I said, it got to come around one more time. Right. I'm not going, I'm not, I don't care what anybody say. I'm quitting. I'm selling people babies. I'm doing whatever it takes to make that money. <laughs> and so I said, this is my time. This mm. is the time. I got, I got to go. I'm never going to get the chance again where the world's come to an end. The interest rates are super low. Mm-hmm. Um, people are really, when there's blood in the streets, you can make a lot of money. Mm-hmm. And so I said, I'm going to go out here. I've been saving and waiting for this moment my whole life. This is the time. And so that's what made me go out and buy the property. I love it, man. Warren Buffett said, while everybody's panicking and running away, you go toward and you just buy, exactly. buying it all at a discount. That, that was the time. That was the time. And I was like, this is my Warren Buffett moment. 
this, if I don't do anything else for the rest of my life, if I get 2020 right, I'm gonna be so loaded for the rest of my life. So, so that's so, what made me do it. So what were you doing? Were you just stacking for, for yes. this moment? Always. And then you said, okay, yeah, I'm just gonna take that money stacking. now. Yeah, always stacking. Wow. Yeah. So I always knew ahead of time that this time was gonna come, Okay. but I said, I wanna be ready. Okay. And so I said, I'm gonna have the experience, mm -hmm. the track record, I'm gonna have the reputation, I'm gonna have the relationships, so I can easily pick up the phone and call people. So I always tell people, look, I'm doing all this stuff for you and maybe can help you. There will be a day when I call you and I mm -hmm. expect you to answer the phone. So I was, re I was like, this is the time when I'm ready to put in the calls. Yep. This is the time when I'm ready to tell people, look at my track record. Mm -hmm. This is the time when I'm ready to call a bank and say, I need you more than you need me. Let's go. Mm. And so this was the time. So I said, let me, let me use my, my trump card now. Yep. I love that. I love that. So for the first 10 years, right, you accumulated about nine properties. Yes. Right? So you waited for 2020 or the world to end to just. I always, my just, plan was, that was always plan. Okay. To, to wait. One, one a year. One, on average, first mm -hmm. one a year. And then start to build the portfolio. Nice. So I got when I got to the ten properties, you get you could have ten properties in your personal name with a mortgage. Okay. So I knew eventually I was going to have to start the LLC and yep. start buying by the apartment buildings, but my plan was I want to have enough dry powder, and that means you have money sitting aside, whether you get it out of properties to do something big, because mm -hmm. it takes time to buy this, like say a million dollar property, you got to put twenty percent down, you need two hundred thousand dollars, and so. I didn't want to have to use a hard money lender yep. or any business partners to buy my first apartment buildings. I wanted to gotcha. do it on my own. So I could have partnered a long time ago, but I said, no, uh -uh, I'm, do I'm going, I want this for myself. It's all yours. I want this for myself. And then later I'll get partners. Nice. But at the beginning, I said, nah, I work too hard. I'm going to do this myself. What advice would you give to someone wanting to get into real estate investing, but doesn't really have a lot of the capital right now? Um, is working a nine to five, like what, what would be the, I mean, obviously you work yeah. in Wall Street, so the money's a little different in Wall Street, right? Even, no, but the mentality no? okay. is still the same. That's the true, mentality that is, is still true. The same. So what I would tell somebody is they could do exactly like a lot of my students do exactly what I did. Okay. Where you buy the first 10 properties in your personal name. Okay. And what your, some, the reason why is because they're so, you get down payment flexibility. You mm -hmm. could put down 0% if you're a VA, 0% if you're a doctor, if you're a lawyer, you also could do the NACA program and you can get one to four units. So that means you could buy a duplex, a single family, a triplex or a fourplex. Okay. Um, you also, even if you don't live in a property, you could put down 15% if it's a single family. Okay. And you put down 25% if it's um, a, a fourplex, duplex or triplex. So the reason why I like that down, down payment flexibility, because if you put it in the LLC, you got to put 20% down. But oh. you get all this flexibility if it's in your personal name. Gotcha. So take advantage of all those programs. They also have first-time home buyer programs. Yep. Also, if you do FHA, you can put down 3.5% if you have a 580 credit score. Mm -hmm. um, and that down payment can come from friends and family, or you can take advantage of the grants that the state and city will give you. Mm -hmm. So you don't even have to probably pay your own closing costs or your uh, down payment costs. So I would tell people start that way. Okay. Build that experience. Get comfortable managing like one tenant in the beginning or two, and then you're going to slowly build. So imagine you're making like 6000 a year off of one rental property. Yep. In 10 years, now that's $60,000 of cash you're getting in addition to having your full-time job. And you have equity built up in the property because your tenants have been paying down the debt. You don't have to do the HDTV stuff where you're doing a massive rehab. Right. You could buy properties where you're cash flowing only 200 to five hundred dollars a month you don't need to be making a killer money what's going to happen is those few properties in 30 years from now they're going to be generating probably two or three times what you make in your annual salary because mm -hmm. there's no debt and the, the rents have continued to go up and you have just been benefiting from appreciation so we like real estate because you can make money in four ways your cash flows appreciation your debt pay down and tax benefits wow I, 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 I can really appreciate that now. I mean, you can read it in books all day, but once you really see the effects on how it actually happens to you, I mean, my property, the property that I currently live in now, because of the market and so forth, doubled, doubled in appreciation. Wow. It was crazy, wow. you know? I crazy. bought it back in 2016 at a certain price. It doubled after that. Wow. And, and man, okay, so Philadelphia, right? Philadelphia is interesting, and it's interesting uh, for a number of reasons. Real estate is crazy right now. And yes. what I mean by that is um, before you could probably buy a whole block for like 100000 mm -hmm. you know? I mean, what do you think about the market now? 
What, what we what we do at KJ Consulting is we teach people how to invest in real estate, mm -hmm. how to rehab the property, manage the property across the country. And what we tell people is that you want to learn how to become a skilled fisherman or a skilled fisherwoman. Be, and what I mean by that is I don't only want to teach you how to teach you to say go to Philly, go get some fish. As we think about the house, a rental property as a fish, I want you to be nimble. So therefore, you learn how to analyze a market, analyze an individual deal. You can go anywhere in the country and be able to buy real estate. So I first started in Philly. Then I start moving to Philly suburbs. I moved to Harrisburg. Then some of my students, they invest all around the country and New Mexico, Albuquerque, New Mexico and Columbus, Ohio and Maine and um, Indiana. They're all over. Mm -hmm. So what we would tell people is don't get so tied up on one location because you don't have to treat. An uh, investment property like uh, like it's a prostitute. You're not a pimp. You're not a real estate pimp. Mm -hmm. What I mean by that is some people say, I got to buy it because I can touch it. I can see it. No, I want you to be able to analyze the market. You've never been to Apple's headquarters, but you invest in Apple. So use that same mentality to invest in real estate. Trust that you know how to analyze the numbers and put a team together mm -hmm. and stack the odds in your favor so you can bounce around. But Philly is definitely overheated. And the people who have the deep-seated rela deep relationships, they're going to have an advantage. I love it. KJ Consulting, right? You're the co-founder. Who's yes. your other co-founder? Is it Jody? It's Jody. Yep. Jody the man right there off camera. <laughs> um, let's talk about that, right? Um, you have how many students do you have in your program right now? So what we do is we want we believe in this philosophy that you don't have to spend a thousand dollars on a real estate education in order to make a thousand dollars from investing in real estate. Mm -hmm. So what we do is we basically teach you how to analyze a market, how to analyze the individual deal, give you all the terms, uh, t explain all the terms and terminologies, give you an analyzer. A mathematical analyzer in Excel to teach you how to analyze the deals um, and tell you how to register your LLC and and basically tell you how to get money whether creative financing credit yep. cards and lines all this different stuff we have one package the real estate bundle on our website for only forty nine dollars oh, one time wow. payment is that you're probably getting between five hundred to seven hundred dollars worth of content okay out of a 49 dollar package wow and the reason why is because i want to meet people where they are when i'm selling you a product i'm selling it to my brother and my sister i'm selling it to me when i was a little kid and i was broke and i didn't have a whole lot of money mm -hmm. i ain't have a thousand dollars for somebody to give me give me the game as they like to say or give me the knowledge because mm -hmm. in real estate you only need two out of three things to be successful you need the knowledge you need to have the grit which means that you're willing to persevere and work at something at least for a year don't give it up or you gotta have the money. And if you just have the two, I'm trying to give you the knowledge. You gotta come to the table with the grit and we can get you to the next level. And so it's only $49 one time payment. That's step one, all, all our students do that. Step two is you subscribe to our IG page. And what we do is we save all our classes that we have every Tuesday. You're gonna have access to a bunch of classes and you're gonna be uh, have access to exclusive free events. So I may have a meetup in Philadelphia at the Gallery, or I may have a meetup in Chicago. Whenever I'm there, you can come and ask me questions. And we're also going to do IG events where it's a Q&A where you get to ask all your questions from the, the bundle and also from the classes. So I tell people, go do the bundle two times, at least two times. Go through the classes at least two times. Everyone online, yep. bring your questions. So it's four, $49 for the bundle and $4.99 a month just to get educated. That's like 17 cents a day wow. just to get educated. Nothing, nothing more and nothing less. I love that. That's that, that $49. That's less than a video game today. That, you know, and, you while know, people playing video games, yeah. you're really playing the game in real life in order to generate a lot and of income. Pretty much, we put like our 20 years of experience in that bundle and into our subscription. Now, Jody, Jody, your your your, your business partner, partner, your yep. business partner. What does he do for a living that made you want yep. to partner with him? So, uh, my business partner, Jody. The way I met him is he interviewed me at the uh, at my old employer. And he was in New York office. I was in the Boston office. A bunch of my coworkers one day asked me to do a conference call with them. Okay. Jody's on vacation in Florida. He is so determined to figure out what the hell I'm doing that he walks out on his family and go in the, in the, in the, in the, in the parking area and talk to me on the phone. And I'm like, oh, this kid probably not that serious. The next week he got back, he drove up to uh, New York. I mean, to Boston. He drove, mm -hmm. from, he drove from New York to Boston to come meet me, take me out to dinner. A cheap date took me to Chinese because should have got a steak, but <laughs> that's another story. Um, and 
he just impressed me that he was so, so determined. So he became like one of my uh, private students. Mm. And what he would do is uh, he would do anything to help. And so if you want your mentor to be serious and invest in you, show him that you are dedicated. You will do whatever you can to add value because you don't have expertise or anything. So right. I was teaching him how to analyze markets, individual deals. And then he started his first year. He wanted to buy like 12. I told him that was crazy, but he did buy uh, eight single families. Um, oh, wow. And so we figure out the system when I mean eight rental units. Um, so it's so important. Like I was telling you, if you had bought like a fourplex, you buy two fourplexes, you got eight units. So, but he had bought his eight units. And then after that, he became one of my debt investors. And then after that, um, by 2020, he had said he tried to do some stuff on his own. And he realized he could go much faster if he got a partner. Yep. And he decided, he asked me to partner with him and I trust him. I like his work ethic. Then we bought an apartment building together. And then, um, I was thinking about what was going to be my next move. And he was like, KR, I know you like to work with people one-on-one -on -one privately. You probably should get on social media and do what you did for me and other people. And that's how we started KJ Consulting as an opportunity to leave a legacy and have an impact on other people. I love that. Regardless love that. of their race or class or sexuality, we don't yep. care. We want to bring everybody together. How are you um, promoting? Uh, I know you said that you're promoting um K, um, KJ Consulting yeah. um, through social media. Is yeah. it primarily on Instagram? Are you on TikTok? So we are on, you, you're right, we are on TikTok. Okay. All, all right. We also are on um, Instagram and mm -hmm. we're on YouTube as well. Okay. And, and how, we have how, our website. How can people connect with you? Then? So people that want to connect with us, they can go to our website, which is www.kayjayconsultin.net. Yep. N E T. And also on IG is KJ Consulting. Um, and if you also Google KJ Consulting, um, and we're also on uh, TikTok as well, it's KJ. Nice, nice. I love it. I'm going to have all of that in the description of the video as well. Let me tell you, you are a breath of fresh air. And I'm going to say, I'm, I'm going to say why. There, there's moments in time, especially for me, where, you know, sometimes you wake up unmotivated or you wake up there's so many pressures of life coming to you you know especially having the post-traumatic stress that you had from you know growing up and you're still dealing with all of that but to see someone like yourself really successful in what you do and not only successful monetarily uh, and materially but uh, successful in the mindset that you had to come up out of your situation and not let anything stop you is truly commendable and I really do appreciate that you know and I was I'm, I'm glad that Jody reached out to me and said hey we got to get KR on this show you know mm -hmm. so I thank you so much for everything that you've been able to you know share especially with the audience and I, I hope this thing goes viral I hope oh, it goes viral for I one or two reasons that. right to share the story, but then also to get the word out about your consulting firm as well, because I'm pretty sure you can help so many others in their quest to, you know, build financial uh, oh, gains yeah. for their family. Yeah, that's the, that's, the, that's the main goal. Like, at this point in my life, I'm focused on, like, transformational wealth. Mm -hmm. And so some people say, what is that? And I say, well, you know, generational wealth is like, I do something then 30 years from now, then my family will benefit from it because it's being passed down. Instead, I want to do something, not necessarily a north to south, but probably a east to west, where I'm starting to focus on my friends and family. How can I transform their wealth today? Mm -hmm. So I got my stuff together. I convinced my brother to get his real estate license. So when I do a million dollar deal, he gets a 3% commission. He's getting $30,000. He was able to move his family of six children, his wife, into from like, say from Philly into Abington, outside mm -hmm. of Philly and, and, and Montgomery County. Now they're going to a better school. Now they're creating wealth. Then his father-in-law, and his mother-in-law, he was able to gift them $8,000 so they can buy a duplex instead of mm. living in an apartment. So then I'm able to and hire like maybe an aunt or a cousin or family members. I have family members that work me, and I'm able to also give them equity in my LLCs where they don't have to put any money down. So it's basically I create my own table, and I get to invite who I want. So I'm transforming their lives today, not 50 years from now. So that's yep. why I'm focused on transformational wealth. That's why I'm starting to write some books and putting out content to help people understand that, look, you, there are ways that you could be a good person, take your time, have integrity, and move at your own pace um, and win the race. When are you coming out with this book? I'm working on I'm working on it. You need that I, book out now. I'm, I'm trying to buy it. it. All right. I'm going to let you guys know. <laughs> it's it's going to go deep. This is, um, 
again, this is an amazing experience. Um, uh, again, I saw your videos last year, and I was just very fortunate that we were able to connect in some way. And I wish you nothing but the best in the future. And I hope that we can continue to forge this relationship, and, you know, and see where, where each other go. Hopefully, I'll be a, a huge podcast. And, you know, obviously, you're still doing your thing. We can connect Absolutely. One, one way or another. Absolutely. I had a fun on your, on your platform. Uh, thank you. Everybody, KR, we got planes to catch. We ain't got time for the nonsense.